so glad, so glad, so glad to meet with so many of you tonight. And uh, we sent out this special uh, um, announcement about our teaching tonight. And we praise God. We want to thank God. Thank God for this opportunity to meet with you uh, online as we look at this great uh, anointed uh, subject about how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And God is going to bless a lot of people. He's going to bless a lot of people. So we're going to focus on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to explain what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, what it's not. And uh, it's going to take a little bit more than one session. Uh, we want to, I want to thank CK down in Houston, Texas, and several others who requested that we teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And CK and others, I just thank God for you and your request. God's going to answer. I have been excited all day about teaching tonight. And uh, thank God and praise God for the presence of the Holy Spirit living in us. And so we come tonight in the mighty name of Jesus uh, to present a message and believe God to lead us and guide us. And um, we want to ask uh, our friend, Dr. Gene Bratton, uh, pastor of the uh, Living Water Fellowship in Wilmington, Delaware, to lead us in prayer. Can everyone hear? Yes, very well. Very good. Father God, we thank you for this assembly. And where your people are gathered together, Father God, be it physically or remotely, Father God, we know that the meeting is always blessed. So as we go forward, Father, we ask you to bless our, our teacher tonight and give him and his wife everything they need as they, Father, as they proclaim your holy word. So as the Saints are edified, Lord. You be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Jean. Thank you, Dr. Jean. Uh, Jackie will be in the chat window soon, and she'll be answering your questions and ministering in the chat window. Thank God so much for Jackie. Praise God. Thank God for Chris Curry down in uh, Dallas, Texas. Brother Chris is on with us, and we give God the glory and honor. And if Chris can open his phone uh, unmute his phone. Just would like to say, have him say greetings to us or hello. While Chris is getting that together, or we hear from him later, praise God. We Kathy from uh, Kathy Blaylock from uh, Newark, Delaware. Kathy, praise God. Kathy and Ralph from Newark. Delaware, we've got a lot of people on with us tonight. We'll hear from everybody uh, around about 8 o'clock when we finish our, our formal presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, expect to get blessed. Expect the Holy Spirit to bless you. Expect the Lord to teach you uh, some things that you already know and, 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 and don't know. And I'm expecting and um, this, this subject, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and I've been filled with the Holy Spirit for almost mm, 40 years. But, but still, still not, not, I don't, I have not arrived. I'm like Paul. The Apostle Paul said, I have not apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and stretching for those things which are ahead, I press toward the mark for the prize of the a high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, if any preacher comes or prophet or apostle or teacher tells you, I'm, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost I'm, and, 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 and I've arrived. No, no, none has arrived. In fact, some of those who claim they're filled need to humble themselves, need to humble themselves and, 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 and get filled again. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been so much controversy about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so you have a whole big camp. The majority of Christians today do not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why is that? It is because Satan saw what happened on the day of Pentecost, and it put such a whooping on him and, and destroyed his kingdom. And he said, 
I'm going to fix them. And he has been causing confusion ever since about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I might be preaching on Sunday morning about what happened to Satan on the day of Pentecost. So if you can join me on Sunday morning, we'll give you the full story, the on-the-spot report about what happened to Satan on the day of Pentecost and, and, and why he hates the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, praise God, praise God. We're going to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what it is, what it ain't, and, 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 and how to get it. And, 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 and we're just going to blow a whole lot of these preachers out of the water who, who, who teach negatively about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They have messed people's minds up and, 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 and probably won't even mention uh, 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 speaking in tongues tonight because when, when, when most people think of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they think about speaking in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, you are far off course Speaking in, speaking in tongues is a, an evidence of the baptism, but everybody does not get the gift. Read the Bible. Read the Bible and stop believing some of that dumb stuff the bishop puts out. You know, some of these bishops are so, so, so unspiritual, Gene Bratton. That's what I'm saying. They are so controlling. They are so fearful. They, they, want, they want to keep these hundreds of churches they have under their grip. And so yeah. they're, they're control freaks, and because they're, they're, they are, do not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and most of them have no power, absolute, uh, stay, try, try to stay in your seat, Pastor Carnes, try to stay in your seat. Chris Curry, <laughs> pray for me now. Try to stay in your seat. Because when I think about some of these bishops who control pastors and, and some of these pastors who control people, I mean, we're talking about pastors who control the lives of hundreds of people, and they are free to let the people go for themselves and get the power to get healed, the power to get delivered, the power to get their household set free. And so, so what do you have? You have a whole lot of people in the body of Christ, in the church, who are like, uh, right now, the government of the United States groping, trying to find some solution to the coronavirus. Ladies and gentlemen, we preached for the last two Sundays what the solution is for the coronavirus, and, and that's, that's to humble ourselves and call upon the name of the Lord. God's got the answer. I'm trying to calm myself down because I've got about 35 more minutes to go. I'm trying, but this thing is on me. Praise God, and I praise God. But we will calm down. We'll calm down because I want you to get this. Then I want you to get the, the video, go over the recording, read the scriptures, and then uh, we have a special uh, book that we want you to get from Amazon, and it's by A.W. Tozer, T-O-Z-E-R, A.W. Tozer. His name was Aiden Wilson Tozer. Aiden Wilson Tozer wrote a book, How to Be Filled with with the Holy Ghost. We're going to spend time with this book tonight. And um, A.W. Tozer was born in St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Ka uh, Karen, up in your area. Ryan, up in your area. St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. And uh, he uh, was born in 1897 and he died in 1963, but he left a legacy. And, and some of these bishops ought to read his book. Some of these pastors need to read his book. Some of you folks out there trying to make your ministry work, you're going to make your ministry work. And I know there are ministers out there right now. And uh, we, we, tur we told you a couple years ago, we said to you, what are you preachers going to do when your churches are closed down and people can't go to church? What are you going to do? And they laughed at us. Oh, man, they they thought Pastor Carter had, 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 had fallen off the tree, out of the tree. You know what I mean? But now that many people, the churches are closed, people can't assemble. Now you've got buku numbers of preachers trying to uh, make deals with freeconference.com or Facebook uh, uh, Live or, or some other carrier. <clears throat> and now they're you know, purchasing their webcams and, and their headsets, and they're now they're trying to do ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been presenting to the people for a long time our book, our book that we wrote, 
the online church and the Great Commission. I even give it out to you free if you read it and, and apply. It shows you how to set up your own online church and how to do this ministry. And and so, and and ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how to get filled with the Holy Ghost. One of the things about being filled with the Holy Ghost is God will give you a teachable spirit, Pastor. God will give you a teachable spirit, believer. You will see that there are other people in the body of Christ, and many may be more gifted than you, and that if you work with them and we work together, we can conquer all things. The Bible says in all these things, we, meaning the church, are more than conquerors. Not just you are more than a conqueror. In all these things, we, the church, are more than conquerors. We can conquer this coronavirus because this coronavirus is a piece of cake compared to what's coming down the pike, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm not belittling, belittling, belittling this because there are millions of people suffering and a lot of people are dying. But what we're experiencing now and what has uh, paralyzed much of the church and much has caused what has caused many people to panic and households are freaking and people are quarantined. Now husbands have to spend time with wives and wives have to spend time with husbands and people are looking for holes to crawl in in their own houses. Some trying to sleep under the bed. Well, you've got to face it. But the Bible says in all these things we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. So we're talking about cooperation and, and, and humbling ourselves and realizing none of us has arrived. I see my friend Chris Curry on with us. He's from Dallas, Texas, out of Conshohocken, Pennsylvania. And, and, and Chris was, we were pioneers way back when we, we, we all got filled with the Holy Spirit at, at around about the same time. And we saw the mighty movements of God. But God has not finished his movement. A lot of us who got filled with the Holy Ghost years ago and, and were operating in, in miracles and gifts and, and this uh, uh, have waxed cold. A lot of people who say they're Holy Ghost filled today have no power and have no, uh, don't even use their authority. But God is going to revive. He's going to revive. He's been saying to me uh, since last night, can these dry bones live? And I'm saying, thou knowest, Lord, you know they can. So we're going to spend uh, at least uh, two weeks. And CK, I'm really thinking about spending the month of April every Wednesday in the month of April talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit because once we lay the foundation and then uh, many people are, are going to get filled with the Holy Spirit and th those who already are filled with the Holy Spirit are going to get filled even more and then we're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We will take each gift, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, knowledge, wisdom, there's a whole list of them, and we're going to look at how they operate. And so we're, we're going to believe God to get this thing right so that we can help turn this world uh, for Jesus Christ because the days are numbered, ladies and gentlemen. The days are numbered. Well, Pastor Carter, you're, you're, you're talking tonight like there's an urgency. Yes, there is an urgency, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, there is an urgency. And so... Uh, um, Let's, let's uh, start with Luke chapter 11. I'll give you a few scriptures and then an overview, and then we look at a book by A.W. Tozer. Luke chapter 11, verses 9 through 13. And, and this, this will blow a whole lot of bishops out of the water. This might blow your pastor out of the water. It might blow you out of the water. Now, look, look, look. If, you have, if you're on here because you're curious and you don't want to know, well, what's Pastor Carter going to be preaching about the Holy Ghost? Because I don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Well, I hope you will humble yourself. Let me teach. If I can't teach, Dr. Jean Bratton would take it or Karen Herzog would take it. But at least open your heart to see what Jesus is saying about the body of Christ and how he takes the, the pain out of life, and how he takes the fear away from a coronavirus 
or a fear away from getting sick or a fear away from being quarantined with your spouse. Luke chapter 11, verses 9 through 13, and I say unto you, as it shall be given unto you, I'm sorry, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, you shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The answer to, to our question, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, is right here in Luke 11, 9. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. When we finish these next four weeks, there will be such a clarity about why every Christian needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and I believe God's going to do a major work in every one of us. Verse 10, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So everyone who's seeking, everyone who wants to know, if you ask the Lord Jesus Christ, not Leroy Carter, ask the Lord Jesus Christ, God will not only give you the Holy Spirit, he will, he will, he will uh, let you see uh, uh, the greatness of the power of God in you, and the Lord will use you in mighty ways. And then you don't have to live in fear. No, you don't have to fear man, woman, demon, or beast. That includes the coronavirus. Verse 11, if a son asks bread of, his, of bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he give him a, offer him a scorpion? If ye then, now this is talking to the church, listen to this. Jesus is saying this to the followers, to the believers. He's not talking to heathen, he's talking to believers. He was talking to his followers, uh, the disciples, and it's to us. Verse 13, if ye then, being evil, he calls us evil. He said, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Mm. If you, believers, you and I, members of the church, believers, blood washed, born again, being evil, and the Lord knows how we are. We, we, we're, we're, we're saved on Sunday and, and don't know uh, 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 who we are on Tuesday. Uh, uh, holy on Sunday and, and evil on Tuesday. If you, being evil, Jesus says, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? God wants every believer to be filled and before we go any further, the verb filled, it's past tense in the Bible. When you read the original Greek, and the New Testament was written originally in the Greek language, when you look at the Greek, uh, if you don't have any concept or idea of the tenses used, by the Greeks in their language, then you'll miss the whole point. Because in, 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 in the English language, we have the present tense, of the past tense, we have the perfect tense, we have the present perfect, we have the past perfect, we have the pluperfect. Okay, we have different tenses. Okay, like, I, I eat my bread, that's presence, present. I ate my bread, that's past. I will eat my bread. That's future. Or, or I, I have eaten. I will eat my bread. I have eaten my bread. So these are tenses. Well, in the Greek language, there's a tense that we don't have in the English language, and it's called the aorist. Aorist. A-O-R-I-S-T. Type that into the window, uh, Jackie or Jean. It's called the aorist tense. A O. R I S T A O R I S T and the aorist tense means continuous action it's not present tense it's not past tense it's not future tense 
It's continuous action. In other words, there are many verbs in the Bible that mean aorist tense. That means continuous action. And so when we see scriptures like, and be not drunk with wine, then be not drunk. Drunk is in the aorist tense. It means con stop continuing to be drunk with wine. In other words, stop drinking that wine y'all drinking. And then <laughs> that in that same scripture, it says, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. Then in the Greek language, the scripture is saying, be continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. Hey, Chris Curry down in Dallas, Texas, that means we got to keep on seeking the Lord for filling, for filling, daily fillings, continuous fillings. And so where the church has missed it, and a lot of teachings that many of us from the old school have had, you know, we came up under once you get filled with the Holy Ghost and, 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 and get some uh, evidence in your life. You can lay hands on the sick and they recover. You lay hands on somebody and they went out in the spirit or you cast out a demon uh, out of your neighbor's house by speaking the word of God. And so you thought you had it. You thought you had arrived. Everybody labeled you as a prophet and, and that. And you've been riding that glory for 30 years, but now you don't have any power. Okay, now uh, you've joined everybody else, and you're scared. You get a little cough. You get a little sniffle. Uh, your chest gets a little bit bit tight, and you think you got uh, the coronavirus. And uh, and so a lot of people are freaking out. Okay, so you call the bishop. The bishop won't answer his phone because he don't know anything about the power of the Holy Ghost. You call your pastor. Your pastor, uh, he's too busy uh, because he was so busy uh, preaching some little flowery sermon trying to tickle somebody's ears. And now he can't handle it. And so what we have, we have the church looking like, duh. When there's a, a whole virus threatening the nation and the world, and the church has the power to shut it down, you and I, the church has the power, ladies and gentlemen, to say to any mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And if the church would only come together and, and, and do what God says, but the church is freaking out, just like the government's freaking out. And so we've got to go back to the Bible and, and take a basic look. Back, we're going back to basics and take a look. And, 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 and the, the aorist tense means continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Continue to read your Bible. Continue to praise the Lord. Continue to worship God. Don't sit on what you experienced yesterday. Don't depend on what you experienced today. But continue to seek the Lord. Continue to humble yourself. Continue to trust God. Continue to ask. Continue to seek. Continue to knock. And God will continue to pour out his spirit. So I had to lay that framework so that we can know what direction we're going in. Okay, we're going to look at briefly, and, and I will cover this in the next few weeks, each week, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit so we can dispel the myth, the myths that are out there. And it is actually the power Jesus has promised that the Father would give every believer to be a witness for Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the power of God to live in inside of every believer so that the believer can be a witness for Jesus, so that the believer can uh, express sanity when everybody else is freaking out, so that the believer can give a comforting word when someone is afraid, so that the believer can cast out an unclean spirit that's causing uh, your child to have nightmares, so that the believer can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And God has given us this power to do this, and, and the power is all for the purpose of us to be living the successful life, to give God the glory and to glorify Jesus Christ. But what has happened is this. you got a few people, and they, uh, 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 now they have their own TV programs. they got their own ministries. They say, my ministry. And so people think they're, they're, they're hot shots. And, and so... And most Christians today, most Christians today, I'm going to say it, most Christians today are too bless God lazy to read the Bible for themselves. Most Christians are too lazy to set aside prayer time. Most Christians are too busy uh, doing their own thing, making their money, doing
doing their own thing instead of seeking God. Lord, what is your will for my life? What is it you want me to do? And so, and so God uses something like a coronavirus to slow everybody down. He will quarantine everybody. God knows how to get you uh, off your high horse. God knows how to get us off our, our, uh, out of our big cars. God knows how to get us off the highway. God knows how to get us out of the restaurants and out of the clubs. God knows how to get us out of a money-making mentality. And to bring, he knows how to bring us back to him. And it's sad that we have to go through this, but God is God. He said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And so, and so there are many Christians today who have forgotten what their life used to be like before they got saved. I mean, it was miserable, ladies and gentlemen out there drinking that liquor. I'm telling you. It was miserable out there uh, 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 smoking dope. It was miserable out there running with somebody else's wife. It was miserable out there any time you go to a bar and, and have to sit with your face to the door because you don't know when somebody's wife has come, somebody's husband's coming in with a gun to blow your brains out. It was miserable out there wondering when somebody you had messed over is going to retaliate. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been out there. I've done that. And so when I got saved, God gave me a new life. But it is so easy for us to forget the, the, the lying, uh, telling a lie, and having to tell another lie to cover up a lie, and, 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 and uh, robbing your own household, robbing your own mother. And, and it, it, it was miserable out there doing some of the things we did. But now we've got, uh, we're saved now. And we have these comfortable pews. And we have our own seat in the sanctuary. And, 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 and we choose our churches. Because uh, we know if we go to this church, Pastor so-and-so ain't going to talk about adultery because Pastor so-and-so is committing adultery just like you are. Or you can go to a church and, and they're not going to talk about this because the leaders are doing the same thing you're doing. So we pick places where it's comfortable. Now, we go to a church where it's all right to, to be a, a homosexual, a sodomite, and, 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 and we go to churches with other sodomites because we know that they're not going to preach about the sin and the abomination of sodomy or lesbianism. And so the church has gotten so comfortable. And then every now and then a plague comes by. And, and, and those who really trust the Lord and know the power of God are the ones God uses to deliver the people out of the plague. When you look at Old Testament and New Testament, God always raised up somebody to deliver the people when the, after the people had gotten too comfortable and turned their backs against God. And we're living in a nation, ladies and gentlemen, and, and we're looking at nations that duplicate the United States. We're living in a time when the so-called church has gotten so comfortable, so at ease in Zion, many people don't even carry a Bible anymore. Okay, uh, well, they, they say they're downloading uh, the scripture on their cell phones in church where they're really texting somebody or looking, uh, downloading the restaurant to see what is on the menu or ordering their menu for after church. So God knows what he's doing. So we're going to look at, look at why every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and the purpose, and the purpose is to glorify Jesus. Not glorify your ministry, not glorify your corporation, not glorify the housing development you have built, not glorifying uh, 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 the, the churches you have built in Africa, uh, but to give the Lord Jesus Christ some glory. And when we look at the New Testament, we see men and women who glorify the name of Jesus. I mean, the name of Jesus meant something to them. So God's bringing us back to where we ought to be. Okay, uh, we're looking at the we're going to look at the Christian source of power, and um, many of us are going to realize that we don't exercise the power that we've been given. Many of us have gotten off track. We're going to realize that many of us need to get back on track. 
and uh, uh, many of us don't witness anymore. And let me ask you a question, and I'm talking to myself. It's rhetorical. When's the last time you led somebody to the Lord? What do you mean, led to the Lord? You know, there are many, many, many people, millions of people who, who go to church every Sunday. Well, we're gone before they close the churches down. Who are not born again. They have never confessed Jesus as their Lord. They joined a church. And we're living in a, a nation where they have, they have this, it's called American Christianity. American Christianity is Republican. You got to be. You're, you support the Republican Party. Uh, you go to church. Your name's on the roll, and and uh, and uh, you 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 mo mostly have your own business, and this and that, and 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 you believe in educating your kids, and uh, it is so far. American Christianity is so far off base from what the Scripture says. Okay, let's go to Acts chapter two. I'm laying down a foundation, ladies and gentlemen. And so you won't get it all in one night. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, so it means you've got to go and study up on the, what did the day of Pentecost really mean in the Old Testament time and what it meant at the time of the disciples getting together when the Holy Spirit was poured out. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I, I will not be teaching on tongues right now, but in this sense, on the day of Pentecost, when they spoke with other tongues, it meant that they spoke in the various languages of the people who were assembled in Jerusalem. Later on, you see in, in uh, verse 9 and 10 and 11, the various countries that were represented at, uh, in Jerusalem to s celebrate the Passover. And they heard these unlearned, uneducated uh, uh, Galileans speaking in languages that they knew nothing about. Yet, they were speaking in these people's languages. Okay? And Satan, Satan uh, saw this, and we, I'll talk about this on Sunday morning, if you're able on Sunday morning to join me, and what Satan did, and why he has caused such confusion over this thing called tongues. And then, and because people uh, have run with Satan and partnered with Satan in spreading the confusion, now believers who uh, studied a little further in Acts, a little further in Acts, realize that tongues, the tongues at the day of Pentecost was to... Uh, glorify Jesus Christ in the lives of the people who represented the various countries in Jerusalem. But later we see in the book of Acts, and Paul teaches it, Peter teaches it, uh, 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 and, and, and um, the New Testament teaches it, that there is a prayer language that God gives to every believer. But because Satan has fought this so much, and the bishop has turned his back to it, and, 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 and some of you go going to churches where they don't believe. I don't believe in tongues. I've had people, uh, and, and so what they say, they, what they do, they equate uh, the ignorance of tongues with the Holy Spirit baptism. I've had pastors tell me, Pastor Carl, I want you to come and preach on Sunday, but don't bring that Holy Ghost mess. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. They don't want that Holy Ghost mess. And the mess means that because of the ignorance of the body of Christ, they do not study the Scripture, have not studied the Scripture. They do not realize that the tongues that the uh, believers experience in that 
initial baptism of the Holy Ghost upon the church in Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4, was to demonstrate the power, the glory of Jesus Christ in the lives of the believers, and the demonstrations were to convince the outside audience, different nations who were there in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, to convince that this Jesus whom you crucified, Simon Peter said, God is raised from the dead, and this what you experience is what God has promised through the prophet Joel. And when Peter preached that, they were quickened. They were cut to the quick, and 3,000 people, 3,000 people from nations that uh, uh, didn't even understand the Galilean language, but yet Galileans were speaking in their, their tongues, they heard the gospel about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and they believe in Jesus Christ. And so the scripture goes on, and the rest of the New Testament is, is all about the power of the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts is actually called the Acts of the Holy Ghost in the Lives of the Apostles. And so uh, what Satan has done and what many believers have allowed him to do is to put this whole Holy Ghost baptism into a box and label it with the label glossolalia. That's the seminary term, glossolalia, gibberish. In other words, people speaking this language are out of their minds. They need to be locked up. And I've had them uh, 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 tell me that. You know, you need to be locked up. Nobody understands what you're saying. And yet, because people don't read the scriptures, they don't understand that God wants to live inside of every believer. The Holy Spirit wants to live inside of every believer. And that's what A.W. Tozer talks about in his book. We're going to go there in a moment and just spend a few minutes with it. God wants to live in every believer. And, and then uh, when, when God puts Romans 8, chapter chapter 8, verses 26 through 28 on top of it, God gives us, gives us help in reaching him and touching him and living daily in his presence and in his power because the word of God says, likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmity. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit makes groans and utterances that cannot be articulated, cannot be translated into English. But he that searches the heart, meaning the heart of the believer, the Holy Spirit searches the heart. God searches the heart. He knoweth, God knows what is on the mind of the Spirit, for the Spirit prays in the perfect will of God. And so a lot of believers are missing out on the baptism of the Holy Spirit because they've been messed up about this thing called tongues. But those, of those, those who do speak in tongues, uh, as they begin to teach others and do it scripturally and use 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 and teach it right and correctly, we can help bring enlightenment to the body of Christ so that every believer, there is not a believer on the face of this earth who ought to be afraid today of the coronavirus. I'm going to say this again. Well, you, you're saying this because you don't have it. There's not a believer on the face of the earth today who ought to be afraid of the coronavirus. How can, how can you say that, Pastor Carter? Because the word says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so, so uh, we want you, as we go along in the next, three, three, four, next several weeks, we want you to realize that even though the coronavirus may get worse, you can rest in peace and strength in the Lord because you're going to come to the knowledge that greater is he in you than he that's in the world. And when you uh, begin activating what uh, the writer Paul said and activate the aorist tense, continuous action, okay, do not continue to be drunk with wine. Stop running to your wine uh, 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 cellar or stop going to your bar. And, and you don't have to have a drink every, every, every half hour when the news gets bad. No, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You don't have to order CBD to rub your body 
and to get rid of the pain. You don't have to smoke cannabis. You don't have, you don't have to grow a garden of cannabis. No, no, no. Get filled with the Holy Spirit so that when the troubles come upon you and your family's asking questions and, and, and people don't know what to do, and when the government knocks on your door, what shall we do? You can give them the answer that comes from the Word of God because you're dwelling in perfect peace and you can give people what they need. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. I know some of you are quarantined and, and it's not a happy situation in some of your households. Uh, even your cats are acting crazy and the dogs are acting goofy. Okay? And, and, and you try to put the dog out, and the dog ain't going out. Okay, so this quarantine is not easy. But then uh, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then you can understand even more. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall mm -hmm. abide under the shadow of the mighty, Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, you are my refuge, my fortress, my trust in whom I have trusted. And we can stay in perfect peace, and we can help people to walk in peace, and then we can comfort the sick. And, and if the coronavirus knocks on our door or somebody's door, we can tell that plague, no plague shall come nigh my dwelling in the name of Jesus I command it. In fact, yesterday the Lord, uh, it was getting so windy outside, there was a little tornado coming, and the Lord had spoken to me, uh, 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 would you be willing to stand out on your porch and speak to that wind? And command that it go. And, 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 and I didn't have to do that. I did not have to do that. I went out on the porch, and I thought about what God was saying. And I'm saying, okay, my neighbors think I'm crazy, but I just have to uh, be labeled crazy. And then the Lord himself calmed the wind down. I didn't even have to speak it. He calmed the wind down. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, people are going to look at you like you're crazy. You're an oddball. But you, you own up to it because that's the way it was with the apostles. And, 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 and the world hated them. And the world will hate you. And, and we're talking about making a choice, ladies and gentlemen, not just joining a church. Well, we've made a choice to receive Jesus Christ to be our Savior and Lord. And the purpose for the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for you to glorify Jesus Christ, the one who died for your sins and mine, and, 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 and take the emphasis off glorifying yourself and, and selfishness and, and me, 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 my, 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 and, 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 and talk about the glory and honor of God and how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. We're talking about preventing this world from perishing, and we're talking about how to get people saved so that when Jesus comes back again, we will go back to, uh, with him uh, uh, in the rapture. Praise God. Okay, so I did a whole lot of talking. Uh, give me, give me some, some more minutes, ladies and gentlemen, because I want, I want you to get a taste of this book. How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit by A.W. Tozer, T-O-Z-E-R. You can get this book if you are a Kindle reader person. You can download this book at Kindle. Uh, you can get a free reading from Kindle. Or uh, if you're like me, you've been using Kindle for a while. This book only cost you 98 cents. It only cost me 98 cents to download it yesterday. Okay, How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, by A.W. Tozer. And uh, first he starts off with distinguishing between uh, matter and spirit. The reason why man cannot handle the coronavirus and men's efforts cannot handle it is because uh, the coronavirus is a spiritual thing. Ladies and gentlemen, and we need to know this. We need to know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. The reason why a lot of households are caving in, churches are closing, nations are tumbling, is because uh, leaders are trying to fight things based on uh, fleshly weapons or the man's uh, 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 ability to handle situations, whereas God has given us in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven 
and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And so uh, A.W. Tozer distinguishes between matter or, or man's ability and spirit. Man can only do so much. The spirit has no barriers. There are no barriers. The spirit can penetrate matter, but matter cannot penetrate the spirit. And so he spends a little bit of time, time with this, and then he talks about uh, being, uh, he distinguishes it between the Holy Spirit, it, and he, because most of the church calls the Holy Spirit it, but the Holy Spirit is he, the Holy Spirit is a person. And then, and, and then, and then Tozer talks about the Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God, three persons making one God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He talks about being a Trinitarian, and we are Trinitarians. We are not Unitarians. Unitarians shut the Holy Ghost out. We are Trinitarians. We believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Three offices in one Godhead. God has three offices. God the Father has his office. God the Son has his office. God the Holy Spirit has his office. None does anything on his own without coordinating with the other. And so um, Tozer does a good job in this. And then he talks about the Holy Spirit, a person. He wants to live in you and in me. The Holy Spirit has a will. He has intelligence. He has feeling. He has knowledge. He has sympathy. He has the ability to love. He can see. He can think. He can hear. He can speak. And he can desire. And he wants to live in you and me, every believer. And so uh, this is going to be new to a lot of people who are listening to this. But God wants to live in us. And whereas the church has been t teaching us, you know, go out and get a job and uh, bring your tithes on Sunday and join an auxiliary, be in the choir or, or ushers and uh, uh, feed the hungry, and we all assemble on Sunday and get our marching orders, go back Monday and start doing this. No, no, no. The purpose of the church, the reason why we are part of the church, is because we ask Jesus Christ to come into our lives. And now Jesus wants to come in the fullness. That is why he wants to baptize us in the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist saw Jesus uh, when Jesus was coming to be baptized and, and John stopped baptizing and said to the crowd around him because John was baptizing people for the remission of their sins and John said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John said, I'm just baptizing so that your sins can cover, be covered. But this one is going to take away the sins of the world. And John baptized Jesus. But look what happened. Look what happened when Jesus came up out of the water. Heaven opened up. There was a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear ye him. And then a dove, the Holy Spirit, came down from heaven in the form of a dove and lit on Jesus' shoulder, which meant Jesus was filled with the Spirit. Then he, was, then he was led by the Spirit for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus did not eat or drink. 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness because the devil saw the threat to his kingdom, and Jesus did not sin. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you say, I want Jesus to be my Savior, my Lord, that means you ought to be willing to be revolutionized. I, I have a note here, a question. Before you are filled with the Spirit, you must be sure that you can be filled. Before you are filled with the Spirit, before you ask God to fill you with the Spirit, are you sure? 
that you can be filled? Well, what do you mean, Pastor Carter? I mean that before you ask God to baptize you in the Holy Ghost, because you've heard that with the Holy Ghost you can lay hands on the sick, you can cast out demons, your choir will sing better, and, and if you're the diva of the choir, your voice will be anointed. Well, all these will happen. But the reason for being filled with the Holy Spirit is, are you willing, listen, listen to this now, are you willing to move over and let Jesus take over? I want to ask that again. Bishop, pastor, housewife, husband, child, missionary, all of you are talking about my ministry. Uh, all you folks out there, got to have your way about everything. This is my money. This is my house, my bank account. Are you willing to move over and let Jesus take over? Here's the problem. Here's the rub. Shakespeare said, ah, there's the rub. Most people only want Jesus to come so far. Well, Jesus, I mean, this, you know, this is my car. This is my 1957 Chevy. I polish it. And a lot of people, hey, 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 Jesus, whoa, 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 Jesus. Uh, Jesus, you don't punch a time clock every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I do. So this money is mine. I can do with it. Uh, I, I'm not tithing. Uh, Jesus, I'm the one putting 12 hours a day. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you've got to be willing to move over and let the Holy Ghost take over. Husband, are you willing to love your wife as Christ loved the church? Are you willing to sacrifice your life for her and treat her better than you've been treating her? And, and, and wife, are you willing to honor your husband and reverence him and call him Lord with a small L? Are you willing to sacrifice him? And the Lord says, okay, pick up and, and move to the West Coast. And, and he gives that to your husband. You willing to go with him? Ladies and gentlemen, it is not easy to make some of these decisions but when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and I'm talking about continuously being filled, I'm talking about me not being filled uh, on that day back in 1976 when I went to the Blue Mountain Retreat and they laid hands on me and I got baptized in the Holy Spirit with, and began speaking in tongues and I came back to Chester to our church and God had me lay hands on the sick people in the church and they were laid out on the floor and Folks were healed by miracle power. Chris Curry, you were there. And then we'd go from church to church, lay hands on the sick, and the Holy Ghost will heal people by miracle power. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, am I willing to let Jesus revolutionize my life? Yes, even at the age of 77, at the age of 77, am I willing to let the Lord revolutionize my life and do a new thing by way of the Holy Spirit to glorify and honor Jesus. Because when I look back, we have not really glorified the Lord Jesus Christ as he is supposed to be glorified. Am I willing to put aside all of my hopes, my desires, aspirations, and wants to glorify God? This is what A.W. Tozer is asking asking us in his book. So he says, cast down every idol, every idol throne, reign supreme and reign alone. The church has sung that now for about 100 years, reign supreme and reign alone. Could you pray that to anybody you know? The man who wrote that hymn believed that the Holy Ghost was God. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said reign supreme and reign all by yourself. That is an invitation no man can make to anybody except the divine one, except God. So well, I want you to go on Amazon and get your copy. If you have a Kindle, you can load Kindle to your cell phone or your computer. It's free. And then uh, you, can, you can rent books or you can read them for free. Okay? Um, how many blessed truths have gotten snowed under? People believe them, but they are just not being taught. That is all. I mean, Tozer was out there. He died at the age of 66 in 1963, but he was not afraid to look people eyeball to eyeball and, and tell them, 
uh, people are not being taught. He wasn't afraid to look at pastors and tell them, you're not teaching the people right. I think of our experience this morning. Here was a man and his wife, a very fine, intelligent couple from another city. They named the church to which they belong. And I instantly said, that is a fine church. Oh, yes, they said, but they don't teach what we came over here for. They came over because they were ill and wanted to be scripturally anointed for healing. So I got together two missionaries, two preachers, and an elder, and we anointed them and prayed for them. If you were to go to that church where they attend and say to the preacher, do you believe that the Lord answers prayer and heals the sick? He would reply, sure I do. He believes it, but he doesn't teach it. And what you don't believe strongly enough to teach doesn't do you any good. It is the same, it is the same with the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Evangelical Christianity believes it, but nobody experiences it. It lies under the snow, forgotten. I am praying that God may be able to melt away the ice from this blessed truth and let it spring up again alive, that the church and the people who hear may get some good out of it and not merely say, I believe, while it is buried under the snow of inactivity and non-intention. So that's a little bit of what Tozer is saying. Uh, chapter 2, the promise of the Father. Okay. And... Um, Luke 24, 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the problems in American Christianity and Christianity all over the world, people get the call or think God has called them, and then they run off and start their own church, start their own ministry. Now in the last two weeks, everybody's starting their own online ministry, but nobody wants to come under the... Under the uh, Authority of the scriptures. Nobody, nobody wants to fast and pray. Nobody wants to seek the Holy Spirit for the, for the power. And so what, what you have, and you're, you're going to see it in, in, in the next uh, several months. People running with new ministries, and then they're going to peter out. Why? They're going to fall flat on their face because they're running on their own power or on the uh, uh, fumes the fumes of somebody else's ministry, and they're going to peter out. But Jesus said, Jesus said, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In other words, Jesus said, wait until you get the power. We're going to talk about that on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Wait till you get the power. And then when the power came upon them, then, then, they could run. Then they could run through a troop, leap over a wall like David did. Okay? So we got to ask God. If you, first of all, if you want the Holy Ghost baptism, and I'm talking to those of you who have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, like me, the Holy Spirit baptism is a continuous action. You cannot operate effectively based on what you experienced 10 years ago with the Holy Ghost. Be continuously filled. What I get today, I need more tomorrow. So I need to humble myself tomorrow. Jesus said, tarry ye in Jerusalem. In other words, tarry, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Well, I'm getting tired of waiting because brother so-and-so, brother do that. Uh, he done started his church down in Newark, Delaware. And Kathy, I want you to get together with Gene Bratton. I'll send you both information tomorrow so y'all can hook up because you're neighbors. And, and uh, well, Brother Doodad started his church down in Newark, Delaware, and, and I only got a couple people, and they're, they're too scared. I can't even get any of them to commit, commit to tithing. So, well, don't start the church. You wait on the Lord. You wait on God to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. You know you can have a church without money coming in. You can have a powerful ministry without money coming in if you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you and you're willing to let him instruct you, if you're willing to let move over and let Jesus take over. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, this is a good book. I'll pick up a little bit more with this book next week. In the meantime, I want each of you to go on Amazon and order... This Kindle book, by the way, by the way, by the way, I don't really ask for money, but if you go on my website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, type that in, Jackie, please. 
go to www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com and go to, to the top of any page and click on that Amazon icon, then order your book from my website so we get a little bit of credit for it. Okay, you can go directly to Amazon, or I'm asking you to go to my website, and so every book you order through Amazon, Back to Basics Ministries gets a little percentage and helps us with our, our worldwide ministry. But if, if not, um, go to Amazon.com, type in Amazon Books. When you get to Amazon, Amazon Books, A.W. Tozer, T-O-Z-E-R, A.W. Tozer for Aiden Wilson Tozer, and then type in his book, How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. You can order that as a rental book. You can, uh, uh, if you've got a Kindle reader, they will, they will send it to you for free. Okay, if you want to own your own copy and put it in your, in your library, uh, it's only a few dollars. It cost me 98 cents to download this book. But I'll tell you, for, for a 98 cents book, and you're going to see in the next couple of weeks, it is powerful, powerful. Read this book before next week. And then come on, and then uh, we're going to continue having a good time. What I'd like to do is, is close out this session, this formal session, and then some of us will probably stay on, and, and uh, those of you who choose to stay on after we stop the recording, um, I'd like to answer your questions, hear your comments, and let's chat and chew together. So we're going to stop the recording now. Contact me if you want to. And I'll be glad, those of you listening to the recording, I'll be glad to answer your questions. Contact me by email or by YouTube or Facebook.